Hi, thank you so much for joining me today. In this video, I'm going to talk about resolution. And resolution means a couple of different things. And so we're going to talk about all of those. Let's jump right in because I have a lot to cover. And I'm going to give you a bonus file download at the end of this that you can help determine what your good resolution would be on your, your printer. So let's get going. What I have here on screen, I can zoom in on this a little bit. What I have here on screen is a continuous tone image. Okay, uh, right now it's an RGB. Uh, I have my red, my green, my blue. Let's just look at red just so that we can see uh, a little bit here. And I'm going to zoom in at, at some areas here. As I zoom in, you see that I have all different shades here, right? I've got gray, I've got black, I've got all sorts of things going on. Um, and that's just the one channel that's just red. But the, the point that I want to make is I don't just have black or white here. I have shades. All right. Uh, remember that because that's going to come back a little bit later. Uh, but as we look at this and I zoom in and I keep on zooming, eventually you're going to start seeing little squares appear of solid color. Right. So even right now we have just this smooth like gradient. I mean, it's you know, it's a little bit rough. It's it's got some grain to it, but uh, it's not chunky or anything. It's kind of a smooth gradient here between like blue and purple. But as I zoom in, right, you can see. I don't want to go too far because Photoshop automatically like starts placing a grid everywhere. Uh, but as I as I look in here, you can see now individual squares. And if I really zoom in, I mean, you can see this is what my image is made of, right? These are pixels. Right, picture element, and this particular file is set as 300 pixels per inch. It's going to be really tough to read. I hopefully, uh, when I zoom in on this and in post, you'll be able to see it. But 300 pixels per inch, okay. Um, but each one of these is a pixel, and inside that pixel, there there is no um, there is no variance in color. It, this is solid. This is solid. So that's the smallest unit, right? This is this is the molecule of uh, of a photograph, right? And I zoom out and everything looks great. Really, it's just an optical illusion. I it's a it's a mosaic and the tiles are so small that I can't see that it's actually a mosaic. And that's really important because that's what resolution is all about is um, having enough tiles or enough picture elements enough whatever it is so that your eye thinks that what you're seeing is this smooth tone all the way through and not individual blocks of color. Okay, so this is a continuous tone image, as I said. This is just, I don't know, JPEG, I guess. Okay, now that's image resolution. And remember that these really tiny parts here are called pixels, right? So one of the things that we talk about a lot is pixels per inch. And you see that actually right here as well. It says 300 pixels per inch, not dots per inch. All right. Dots we're going to reserve for the next thing. And the next thing is what happens aboard a printer. So here I have Illustrator up and this is kind of representative of what people think maybe output from a printer looks like. Let's say this is just magenta ink. Drop of ink, drop of ink, drop of ink, drop of ink. Uh, this is what we're calling dots. Right? We don't talk about drops per inch, we talk about dots per inch, but that's really what the dots are all about. So when we talk about dots per inch, okay, that's different than pixels per inch. And what I hope to prove to you here a little bit today is that there's no direct correlation in our print world, uh, in, in inkjet print world, there's no direct correlation between drops or dots per inch and pixels per inch. All right, they, they work very independently of each other. Uh, but here's, here's typically what people think it looks like, a drop, a drop, a drop, and they're, they're all nice and, and cozy. But that's not actually how printers work. Okay, the way printers actually work is that those drops overlap, right? That's how you get a little smoothness. That's how you get uh, a lot of things here. So uh, as an example, um, a typical printer these days might, might print at 1,200 DPI, right? 1,200 dots per inch. Right, um, so I'm not going to do the math, but you know that that's roughly, you know, it's less than a thousandth of an inch between drops. 
Um, a typical, this is not even representative of what really happens because as you look at a typical inkjet printer, the drop width is about 100 microns, uh, which turns out to be about 3 thousandths of an inch, right? So I'm spacing them less than a thousandth of an inch apart, but the width of them is three thousandths of an inch. So it's even more overlap than this on a typical inkjet printer. But this is really what happens. And this right here is one of the reasons, and the next thing we're going to talk about, why there is no correlation between pixels per inch and dots per inch. But I wanted to show you that. That's really what's happening at a printer level when I'm printing, let's just say, a very, very thin line, a one pixel wide or a one drop wide line of ink. It's laying drop on drop on top of drop on top of drop. I, I'm never saying that phrase again. Okay, so I did want to show you that. Let's flip back to Photoshop here. And now let me show you. So we're back here. This is our continuous tone image. Now what I want to show you is this is very typical for how things might be printed in like a magazine or a newspaper or anything like that. Now, the dullness is because I converted this file from RGB over here to CMYK, so I, I lost some, some saturation uh, because of that conversion. I have a lot of really super saturated colors, but it, it's, it's fine. Um, this looks, other than the color, this looks almost identical, but remember when we zoomed in, we saw individual squares, right, pixels, so this is, again, this is commercial print, like an offset print, like you would see in a magazine or a newspaper or a book. Now let me zoom in. Can you see it? Can you see it? Look at that. So this is what's going on inside one of those. And let me just key in on the cyan here. Look at that. So what I have is just a series of dots right actual dots like circles okay and the interesting thing here is if i look in like this area kind of going blind a little bit looking at this uh, but if i look at this area right here i see a really big drop or dot so big that it's overlapping with the one next to it and over here i see a smaller one right where there's spaces between them but notice that the space that like the center of every circle is very evenly spaced, right? So this is this is a method called half toning, and half toning, uh, another in in the the radio world. If you think about AM and FM on your car or or you know home radio, uh, AM is amplitude mod modulation. So what we're doing here is changing the amplitude, and, and FM is frequency. We'll talk about that next, but. This is amplitude. All I'm doing is changing. I have a regularly spaced grid of circles, and the only thing I'm changing is the size of the circle, not their position. Okay, so here's a really light area, right? They're small. Right? If I look at even lighter areas, there's nothing right there. Okay, so there's, there's no ink being printed here, but just little specks of ink right there. Okay, but this is this is amplitude modulation or what we call in the printing world half toning so this is my cyan i should be able to that's nah, in my preferences somewhere but let me bear with me for a second i'll actually change my preferences so that you can see the uh, color channels in color that might make a little more sense here uh, and for the life of me i don't yeah there it is That does me no good. Uh, but when I add magenta, okay, when I add two channels, now they start showing up. But you can see I have different angles, right? My cyan and my magenta, and let's put my black in there maybe. And I just have black in, in certain areas. Um, and then I add my yellow, right? But so I have different angles, um, but they form this, this kind of pattern here, right? They form this pattern and from here it looks terrible but when I'm looking at a normal viewing distance right for a magazine that might be 
you know, 10 inches or something like that. For, for something larger, that might be a longer viewing distance, but from a normal viewing distance, same thing. My eye is filling in those gaps, my brain is doing the work for me, and it's making it look like it's a continuous tone image, like I have smoothness everywhere. Where in this case, really, all I have is solid drops or dots of cyan, magenta, yellow, or here's black, right? So even from here, I mean, this looks like I have grayscale in it, but when I look closer, I don't. It's just black or white. There are no grays in this at all. Okay, so half toning. That's a traditional, like an offset commercial press. Now I'm going to switch over to this one, and this looks pretty much the same, but this is how inkjets work. We talked about amplitude modulation, AM radio. Now we're going to talk about FM radio. So if I zoom in here and I keep zooming in, I'm seeing a different kind of pattern or a different, a different set of elements emerge. And as I look really close, it's really just a crazy set of cyan, magenta, yellow, black squares that sometimes overlap, which is how I get the green here. Okay, but they're they're kind of blocky looking. And if I come just on the cyan, this is what I have going on. So this is what my cyan would print like when I actually go to print this file. Even if I printed the original file, this one here, this is how my cyan would print. I can't print shades of cyan. I can only print solid cyan or not solid cyan. And so this method what we call FM screening, or, or you might see it in some software as stochastic or dithering. Um, this is where the dots are all the same size. And obviously on a printer, these would be circular, not square, but I can't do that easily in Photoshop without changing some settings. Um, but the, the dots are all the same size, but the placement is different, right? So here in a lighter area, they're fairly you know spaced apart and then here i go to darker areas and they're placed very closely together and in some cases they're just right on top of each other okay so again it looks like i see tone let me go to black so we can see right it looks like i see gray but as i zoom in tight there is no gray in this file it's only black ink or white paper in this particular channel right so what happens is I lay down my cyan, right, and then my magenta, and then my yellow, and then my black. It's not really the order we print in, but that's fine. And I get this illusion again that this is that this is going on. Now, if we remember back over to here, okay, with my my example over here, these drops are actually overlapping, right? So, oh, so the first thing we need to know is just because my printer is 1200 dots per inch doesn't mean my file resolution needs to be 1200 drop, uh, dots per inch or pixels per inch. And that's because all of these things overlap. So before anything else, I don't need all that resolution. But the other thing is, in order to make these shades, right, these shades of let's say magenta, I need enough space. I need I need resolution. I need pixels or drops of ink that are that are big enough that I can make them spaced out. All right. So the the net result here is that even on a 1200 DPI printer, I don't need a lot of resolution in order to do that. The math behind creating this type of an image does not require me to have anything close to 1200 dpi now let's switch gears once again and talk about what is a good resolution for your printer okay so i have an indesign document here and i'm intentionally making it small because i want to show you what's going on pretty much what it looks like is one two three four five six seven identical eye images but I'm going to slowly start zooming in a little bit and we're going to see things happen. So I zoomed in once and look, 
Now, definitely I see a difference left to right, okay? This is pixelated. I can see those individual blocks of, of the image, right? These individual squares of pixel. But maybe I see a little bit of image degradation between like here and there, okay? But I'm not really seeing much of a difference between any of these. Let's zoom in again. And I can start to see it a little bit if you look at the eyelashes, if you look at the brows, and actually even in the texture of her skin right over here, I'm starting to see a difference between these two. But again, a little bit here I can see on my screen. I don't know if it'll translate well in video, but it's not a lot. And as I move to the left, it's not much. What I'm doing here is kind of simulating viewing distance. Okay, so this is the really important takeaway from this. When it comes to printing on an inkjet printer, especially for signage, anything large graphics, viewing distance determines your resolution, not your printer's resolution or anything else that you think it should be. Because everybody knows, in air quotes, that, that every image should be 300 DPI. And first of all, we've learned that that's actually pixels per inch, not dots per inch. Um, but that's a lie we used to tell people in the commercial print industry anyway. You don't even need 300 uh, for, a, for a typical uh, commercial offset print. It just gave us a little bit of margin to work with. It gave us some wiggle room. 300 is actually overkill even there. Um, the math says that it's, it's less than that. Um, but this is about viewing distance. Now, here's the important thing. And as I zoom in even more, you'll be able to see, you know, now you can see some discrepancies. And I think I've probably zoomed in a little too much. But here's the important thing. I'm going to turn this layer on in a moment, which is uh, my type down at the bottom. But here's the really important thing. Resolution, because it is both vertical and horizontal, if I double my resolution, I quadruple my file size. If I triple my resolution, I increase my file size nine times. Why is that important? Because hard drives are so cheap these days. It matters not because of the hard drive. It matters because of networks. It matters because of processing. If I only need this much data in order to properly print something, but instead I have nine handfuls of data, it takes nine times as long to move that file across the network. It takes nine times as long to process that job. It takes nine times as long to run a filter in Photoshop or anything else that I need to, right? So I'm, I'm, I'm robbing myself of productivity in addition to file size and, and space on a hard drive. That's the least of the worries, right? Think about having to send a file to someone. If I can send something that's, that's you know, 100 megs as opposed to 900 megs, that's significant. Okay, so now let me turn this on. And these are small, right? These are very small files, right? Uh, very small images, right? This is a four inch by four inch image. But look, so this one over here is 25 pixels per inch. It's 0.029 megabytes, right? I come over here to 100 pixels per inch. That's four times the resolution. So that's 16 times the file size. And that's half a meg. And I come over here from 100 to 300, that's a three times increase in resolution. That's a nine times increase in file size. That's just four inch by four inch. That's 4.1 megs. Now imagine you're doing a tractor trailer, right? Now imagine you're doing something 53 feet long, eight feet high, maybe 10 feet high, right? That's, that's a lot. That's a lot of inches. That's a lot of pixels if I'm working at 300. So this is about viewing distance. So one of the things that I'm leaving you with today is down below in the description, and maybe if I can figure out how to do, I don't know if I can link a file in, the, in, a, in a live video, but I'm going to, in the description, I'm going to give you a Dropbox link to this very file. And what I would recommend that you do is you rip this at 100%, right, actual size, you print it at actual size, and then you just slap it on a wall somewhere. And now you can you can walk, right, your pertinent viewing distance, right? If this is a sign I'm not going to see any closer than 10 feet away, stand 10 feet away from here and figure out what a good resolution is 
for your for your artwork because again there is no correlation here at all between this image resolution and your printer resolution now when you print this and you look close you will see pixels there is a floor at which if I go below I'm going to see pixels in my final print but I'm gonna see pixels from here right from from inches or maybe just a foot or so away I'm not going to see it from you know 25 pixels per inch is you know that's meant for 30 feet away okay so download this file print it out put it on a wall use it as a as a handy guide because especially with if, if you have to work with customers that provide files um, this is always a problem because they always try and provide way too much resolution uh, or I guess the converse is they just download a, a lousy photo off of a flip phone not even uh, not even off of a decent camera phone but in general customers provide way too much resolution because what they've all heard and what we learned in design school and everything else is images have to be 300 pixels per inch and that's just not the case with the other method with half toning uh, that is sort of correct the number isn't really 300 it's just easier to remember and it gives us wiggle room um, but it's kind of accurate but that's because of the way we're creating that that image or that illusion of an image um, and in this case we're creating it differently I don't need nearly as much resolution to get a good file so I hope this has been helpful I hope so much that you've learned something from this because it's a very 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 common misconception um, and as always, um, thanks for joining me. I really appreciate you sticking it out till the end, and I hope to see you again soon. Bye-bye.